Hey there, my name's Gary Sims from Android Authority. We're here at Mobile World Congress 2017 with Russ from MediaTek. Russ, great pleasure to meet you, sir. Pleasure to meet you as well. Tell me quickly who you are in MediaTek, what's your role? Uh, Russ Mestechkin, MediaTek, uh, Corporate Sales International. I take care of the Latin America and North America markets uh, for MediaTek. Excellent, excellent. This is going to be a, a great show, I think, for MediaTek. There's uh, a lot of great stuff going on this year at uh, MWC. Now, we were talking earlier about MediaTek and the competition. We won't mention them by name. But there are, are four maybe major chip suppliers for mobile phones. And I was saying, what position is MediaTek in that? And you said by sales, that they're actually in quite a good position. Do you want to tell me a bit about that? Sure. So if we talk about unit sales, right, the actual phones that are sold in the world uh, in 2016 that were powered by MediaTek, there were over half a million, uh, half a billion, I should say. And it's wow. very difficult to say. Half a billion, that's not a mistake. Um, uh, so if you, if you estimate the global market to be somewhere between one and a half to two billion phones per year, which is probably closer to one and a half, um, depends on which analyst report you read. Um, it's a third of the worldwide market. So I would say if you started to rank by volume, we'd be probably number two. Well, that's, that's great. Now that number two in a particular market, which we would maybe call the mid to low range. I mean, yesterday I saw some new Alcatel phones, very budget, and they all had MediaTek processors in them. So that's definitely a niche that you've, you've dominated, really. Right. So, yeah, so MediaTek uh, uh, has uh, started uh, originally from sort of the uh, mid-range uh, products. Uh, but in the last couple of years, we've certainly made great strides in moving towards the mid to uh, upper market. In 2000 year, uh, two, two years ago, in 2015 now, we launched our brand Helio, uh, which was for our premium uh, line of products. And that kind of sort of kicked off our whole strategy of developing into what we call super mid or um, basically the um, second third time buying uh, customers um, who buy their second third handsets and really demand now higher performance higher quality right um, so we are now announcing this year uh, the latest um, generation of our Helio product X30, which we're very excited about. It's a new 10 nanometer uh, DECA core product. Um, and frankly, if you start looking at some of our customers, perhaps maybe not in Europe and United States, but in emerging markets, um, you started to see some fairly sophisticated, fairly high-end um, handsets, very, very nice products uh, with our Helio, um, uh, with our Helio chipsets, which are um, I would say among the flagships in, in, in that particular portfolio. And again, you know, if you look at the top five handset makers in the world today, um, three of them come now from China, right? So yep. that market certainly can be ignored. Uh, that category of uh, vendors cannot be ignored. And we are very well positioned in that segment. So that's, let's talk about the X30 a little bit. You've announced that now here at Mobile World Congress. That's a 10 cores, DECA core. Uh, 10 nanometer fabrication process, which is the, the bleeding edge in terms of fabrication, also with the ARM Mali GPU inside of it. So, on paper, that's a that's a good set of um, uh, you know good specifications. Right. So it's 10, 10, right? So it's it's uh, um, it's 10 nanometer uh, and it's deca core. It's our second generation of deca core. Um, I think one important thing to really understand is that. It is not a race to the number of cores. Okay, right? yep. Um, so it's not like uh, 10 cores today, 12 cores next year, and then <laughs> 16. Tw 24 cores. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, that's really not it, yeah. right? Um, and, it, and it deserves to be explained. And, and you know, it, it's, it's almost, some, sometimes in media, they, they kind of uh, uh, almost kind of make a, a cartoon out of it. You know, it's a race to how many cores you can add. Um, yeah, we've seen this with, maybe 10 years ago and some, some uh, uh, kind of shady uh, handset makers who went from MP3 to MP4 to MP5, MP6, MP7. <laughs> that, this is not what we're doing, right? Um, clearly, um, the demand from the consumer today uh, is kind of going into two ironically opposite directions. One is extreme performance. Mm -hmm. So there is a race for performance. Yep. Every year we want more, we, we feel we deserve more, we need more virtual reality, uh, augmented reality. These are all, you know, used to be supercomputer yeah. type of applications, right? So that's one direction, extreme performance. The second one is extreme power um, efficiency. efficiency, right? Those two things are 
directly enemies. opposite. They're always enemies of each other. That's right. right. So how do you deal with that? Right. How do you balance one and the other? Um, and the way we do it is essentially by um, what's called, you know, complicated terms is is the um, what we're trying to do here is we do de- we we provide dedicated hardware for both the extreme performance yeah. um, high end uh, cores right that drive the highly demanding uh, power hungry applications typically in a very short amount of time the, the duration of those applications is fairly limited uh, whereas when you don't demand top performance you offload your your, your workload, your, your CPU load, onto a very power efficient cores. So if you provide the high end core and the low end cores, um, the only remaining part is how do you manage it, right? And the analogy you know we've used over the, in the past was you know with cars. When the first cars came up, they, they didn't have a, a, a gear shift box, right? It was a single you know single gear, right? And that's all that, that was required. Um, <clears throat> Once the engines became more sophisticated and the speed increased, right, you needed to, to manage your engine much better. So the switching between higher end performance cores and the lower end performance cores, what we call core pilot, is essentially a gearbox. Yep. The difference is that, you know, it's an automatic gearbox, yep. right? So there is no operator doing it. And, and that operation, because you have now 10 cores, um, similar to maybe a new Mercedes who has nine gears, right? You have to be pretty good at and pretty smart about switching. Switching it, right? between. So that's where the core pilot comes yep. in. And that's, we're in the fourth generation of our core pilot. pilot. We inv- invested tons in the algorithms. This is what used to be called in the 70s and continues to be called parallel computing. Yeah. <laughs> and anybody who studied computer architecture in school knows how not, not trivial that is. It's not trivial at all. So just let me clarify that for some of our, our viewers. Most uh, uh, OEMs, uh, chip OEMs who have eight cores, there are two two clusters, two gears, Today. using your analogy. But the DECA core one from MediaTek, you, you've got the three gears. So you've got the two cores at the highest end, right. and then four in the middle, and then four lower. So you really got the right gear for the right workload, isn't it? And that's what the co-pilot uh, Absolutely. does. Right. In fact, the first generation of the Octa cores used to be all identical cores. They did, this right. Um, then the second generation is so-called Big Little, yeah. right? And now we have three clusters. Uh, we have the extreme performance. That's a, that's the new A73. Yep. We have the A53 in the middle, yep. um, which is what we had in the previous generation. Yep. And now we added A35, yep. which are extremely power efficient. efficient that's right. right. So overall, if you look in the real world applications, we managed to improve the power consumption by 50 percent while increasing the performance by 35 percent. So that's kind of the the, the, the golden ra- grail, right? Absolutely. You, you know, you're going in two opposite directions at the same time. And the great thing is, I mean, looking at that range, the A35 is literally the most power efficient 64-bit core Correct. that ARM make. The 53 has kind of become the stable of all those optical, Correct, the and then the 73 is the highest performance. The you, you've, got, you've got all three covered in That's there, right. and your interconnect and your scheduling is handling the switches between right. those, between power uh, and performance, which, yeah. is, which is a well, great value proposition, I think. Well, now the way you put it, it sounds pretty brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everyone's talking about 5G. I don't know whether you have a message about 5G. I'm skeptical still because there is no 5G standard, but everyone's talking about it. I, I think they're out of the gate too early. Mm. I think people have got maybe their messages confused because they're not really trying to show people what 5G will truly bring us at the end. MediaTek have got anything to say on that at the moment? or? So we're making some announcements today right. about our partnerships in developing 5G. Uh, we're going to work with uh, Nokia, which is the equipment manufacturer leader. Um, because the standards are still kind of up in flux, right? It's important to work with the leaders. I yep. think last year we talked about our collaboration with Docomo. This year we're talking about collaboration with Nokia. Those are the right type of partners yeah, for this absolutely. kind of development. Yep. Um, so we clearly have our ear to the ground. Um, we are working on it. It's a tremendous amount of work. You know, 4G was a huge amount of work. So is 5G probably on steroids. Um, in terms of how soon, how quickly, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, the the demand for the um, the bandwidth uh, obviously is not going anywhere. You yeah. know, US, US carriers finally, finally, starting to talk about unlimited uh, subscriptions, Data plans, right? Yeah. So kind of the, that, the, the, the bird is out of the ca- cage yeah. once people start to, um, and frankly, I've seen this in China a couple of years ago uh, when people started to stream videos and watch it on the, on, on the trains and all that stuff. It hasn't really happened in the US, most of it still is occurring uh, over Wi-Fi. Once people get a hand of it, you know, it's very hard to go yeah, back. It right? is, yeah, yeah. So, so the thirst 
for the data um, is just going to ramp up. Yeah. Um, now, some say that there's plenty of bandwidth in 4G, um, and 5G is probably more about IoT and more about um, yep. uh, distributed computing yep. and things like that. Um, that's probably true. Um, so it, it might take a little bit of time, um, but the excitement is there. Um, there are probably some... Um, um, there are probably some uh, industry of scales to be explored. You know, when the IoT starting to take off and becomes more more, more mainstream, I think uh, I think that's going to drive the investment into 5G, yeah. and we'll be there. You'll be there. We'll Great. Be there. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. It's been a pleasure talking to Russ from MediaTek. Stay tuned to Android Authority. We're bringing you more news and announcements from Mobile World Congress 2017. Thank you. My pleasure.